And finally for tonight, on Saturday, NASA launching its James Webb Telescope into space. The telescope will attempt to photograph far-off galaxies and provide scientists with clues as to the origins of the universe. And of course, Israel playing a small but surprising role in the 30-year, $10 billion project. So joining now with the details is Yafit Ovadia, aerospace co correspondent from SeaTech by Kalkalist. Yafit, it's great to have you back. Thank uh, you for now, having me. Now, first off, you know, hit me with some of the details of the telescope. Well, the telescope is, as you said, $10 billion. It took mm. about 30 years to build. And it's a very highly sophisticated telescope. I'm sure many are familiar with the Hubble telescope mm. and the glittering images it provided galaxies, planets, star-forming regions. So James Webb is like a much more upgraded version. Uh, while Hubble was only able to photograph images that are available to the visible eye, James Webb will focus on capturing those in the infrared spectrum, which we can't even see. Wow, all right, so you know, what exactly is it gonna be looking for, though? Because I, I mean, I alluded to this, obviously, in terms of uh, the origins of the universe, but mm -hmm. what does that mean? It's going to essentially look back in time to the very beginning of the universe. So James Webb plans on photographing galaxies that were formed right after the Big Bang, some of which are hundreds of millions of years old, and help scientists try to figure out how we all started, how we got here. And on a more relatable note, it, kinds of get, it kind of gets us asking, how did we get here? And are there other life forms out there? So it also plans on taking some pictures of some of Saturn and Jupiter's moons, which scientists believe do contain subsurface oceans and perhaps potential life forms. So not just, uh, not just the far off, uh, but also the, the nearby, in our own neighborhood, of course. Yes. All right, so what is Israel's contribution to the James Webb Telescope? Well, I'm glad that you asked that. On Monday, I spoke to two Israeli scientists, uh, one who actually works for NASA, and he took part in some of the theoretical planning behind the launch, because as we've seen, it's a very complex object to launch. It had to be compacted, folded down, and then kind of popped itself up in space. So very complicated maneuvers, not that simple. And he tried to predict what potential hazards or things could go wrong. And he also took part in some of the construction, some of the mirrors. Um, this telescope has 18 mirrors. On the other hand, I spoke to an Israeli female planetary scientist from the Israel Space Agency, and she really praised this project. She said that Israel definitely supports NASA accomplishing this very impressive feat. And I think that Israel now looking at like Bereshit and especially looking toward Bereshit 2, which is planned to launch in another couple of years, I think Israel really understands that space is hard. You know, launching these things are hard, so it's quite impressive. Well, and of course, we're, we're spending a lot of focus, as you said, on mm -hmm. space exploration. Just recently, we had uh, a, you mm -hmm. know, a, a, a Mars uh, trial run yeah. for, for colonization. That was uh, also a very interesting experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, but speaking of sending Israelis to space, we have yes. the first private uh, Israeli astronaut, uh, the second astronaut total, Eitan Steve. Uh, you know, and he's set to set to launch uh, relatively soon. That's right. Tell us a little bit more, maybe about uh, about his preparations. How's he doing? Sure. So he was originally scheduled to launch in early February. Now that's obviously been postponed to the very end of February. And if you recall, he was supposed to take with him 44 Israeli experiments to the space station. Some of which are all of which are Israeli technologies. So the issue was he has too many experiments with him and they can't all fit into his capsule. So some will launch separately and meet him at the station. Um, even though he's launching in two months from now, he actually found the time to meet last month with newly elected Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog, mm. who presented him with a miniaturized version of the prayer of the State of Israel, which he will be taking with him to space. So I guess you could say things are taking a little bit of a patriotic turn. Sure. All right. So he's still he's still taking some things up up uh, you know with him though, yes. uh, at, at least uh, at first. Mm -hmm. the sound, you know, you're telling me that story. It reminds me of uh, you know if Etan Steve had arrived at you know Ben Gurion Airport and and, and uh, the airline told him you know and it's it's too heavy to fit on the on the space shuttle. So maybe if you just check it in your side baggage. <laughs> at any rate, I'm excited to hear way more about this when the time comes. Yafit, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.